Well, I think it's a different message. Uh, if we'd been sitting here at the end of 2021, I would have said that um, equities as a whole you had to be very cautious about. Now you have to be cautious about the indices, but there's a lot of opportunity beneath the surface. Um, value and value markets have been outperforming now for three years. If you take the factor, the value factor, rather than looking at the indices. So in other words, you need to take out that, distort, that distortive effect of the uh, MAG7 in the indices. Mm. Look at the Japanese markets on fire this year. Um, so those value areas uh, certainly represent opportunities. I would say also that investors need to be looking at um, opportunities for real cash flows. The temptation um, we've had is the cash rates are much higher. Um, they're higher than they've been for 15 years. Um, and if you think back to the money illusion, Irving Fisher's uh, money illusion, I can get this much more attractive cash rate, mm. but that's a nominal cash flow and it could be a very fleeting nominal cash flow. So think about the real cash flows in the, in the years ahead rather than just those uh, short term. You put a lot in there as well. Um, if I look at value, cash flow, positive, under 10 times PE companies, which is, I guess, where you're directing us a little bit. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. The problem with those companies, they've been value cash flow positive under 10 times PE stocks for a blooming long time as well. I, I struggle to see when I'm going to see a valuation in certain oil companies, certain telecoms companies, certain other areas, especially in the UK market, when they're going to have their day. I keep waiting for, them, for that dog to have their day. They're also a minority of the market now, and it means that they can be ignored by uh, investors who choose to. Um, work by uh, Andrew Lapthorne at Sockgend yeah. uh, suggests that uh, about a third of uh, the S&P is positively uh, rate sensitive. About two thirds of the S&P uh, would rather that rates went down, and that's the highest um, proportion mm -hmm. since 2001. So by going into these areas, I acknowledge that you're going into a less popular area of the market. Um, but at this stage, with such a rally behind us in 2023, I would say I would suggest that that's where the uh, the best returns are likely to attribute. But just just follow up on that. The income's as illusory as you were saying about the the, the net rate of interest that you get by sticking your money on bonds, isn't it? I mean, net net, you're you're not making a vast amount of money from the income because um, because of inflation. That's, that's true, but um, rates move, and they sometimes move faster than people expect. Uh, I make this well, not point. after Davos. They, they don't, <laughs> they, they've, they've all pushed back quite aggressively, I'll say, James. Well, that's certainly the narrative at the moment. But there will be a, a moment, I think, where the central bank narrative shifts from uh, worrying about uh, entrenched inflation to worrying about growth. Um, and that moment is itself a lagging indicator. The market is, uh, is there already, and, and the central banks, I suspect, will catch up with that narrative. Yeah. Yeah.